So the first seven years of Patrick Mahomes' career clearly outshines that of Tom Brady's. Even if Brady's fans will do all they can to try and discredit the greatness of Mahomes because they are scared of what could happen if Mahomes continues playing and stays healthy. And in this video, we're gonna put an end to this debate, but not before I give a quick update on the alleged Rashi Rice nightclub incident because the owner of that nightclub recently casted some doubt on this even happening at all. So let's talk about it, but first, how about those? All right, first up, I'm gonna keep giving you all any and every update to the Rashi Rice nightclub assault that allegedly happened earlier this week. Well, this morning, early this AM, CBS News released an article that featured the owner of the nightclub, Lit Lounge, Reza Debaje, I think is how you say his name. I'm sorry if I butchered it, but the owner was questioning whether a physical assault actually happened inside the club and involved Rashi Rice. According to the owner, Rice was inside the club in the VIP section for less than half an hour and did not order any alcohol. Quote, at first I didn't know who he was, the owner said. He was pretty nice, he was pretty calm, he didn't even drink. The owner then went on to say that if an assault happened in his own club, he believes he would have known about it. He then shared some security camera footage of outside the club that shows the photographer leaving with a lady appearing completely unbothered. Quote, it doesn't look like a guy that got beat somewhere, the owner said. And while the cameraman does indeed appear to look unharmed as he's leaving, the timestamp of the security camera footage shows this was just before midnight. But if you remember the original timeline from the offense report obtained by news outlets, the cameraman left once earlier in the evening, then was summoned back. He then returned a second time and left after he was supposedly assaulted driving himself to the hospital. So my main question is, is this showing both the first and the second time he left the club in the security footage? I can't really tell because the second clip they show has the timestamp cropped out. Either way, the biggest issue I'm seeing here was the timeline isn't matching up to begin with. The initial offense report states the photographer left the club the first time around 1.30 a.m. Then at 1.55 a.m., the photographer was summoned back. Police were then dispatched around 2.30 a.m. after the alleged assault happened. Well, again, the security camera footage shows him leaving the club just before midnight, which is obviously way earlier than the incident report claimed, an hour and a half earlier to be exact. But hey, Maybe the timestamps on the security system isn't accurate, uh, not sure, but the owner said he plans on continuing to scour his security cameras for evidence, quote, cause I wanna make sure maybe I missed something I don't know. He also turned the security camera footage over to the police while the claims of the alleged assault are still being investigated. And I think that combined with the Instagram messages, should police be able to get access to them, will help everything get figured out. Hopefully, Rice was indeed not involved and the cameras will help prove that. But again, if there's no camera footage that showed the actual assault occurring, it's definitely gonna be a he said, she said, back and forth between the photographer, Rashi Rice, and whoever else was present. For now, the investigation is ongoing and only time will truly tell, but be sure of this, I will keep you updated every step of the way. And from here, I've got something to get off my chest, and that is why Tom Brady stands will do whatever they can to discredit Patrick Mahomes, even though he's on a trajectory to surpass Brady himself. But before I get to that, I've got some good news for you, and that is the sponsor of today's video, Raycon, just got even better. You may have heard me talk about Raycon's best-selling everyday earbuds, as they've been a sponsor of the channel for quite a while now, and I have really enjoyed them, but they have since been upgraded with their new model, now featuring active noise cancellation. I actually turned them on just now and can't even hear myself talk. Hello? Hello? Even crazier yet, with the awareness mode turned on, I can actually listen to music and still hear myself talk if I need to. On top of that, they now have an ergonomic design and multi-point connectivity that lets you pair with two devices at once. So, connecting to both my iPhone and MacBook Pro is easier than ever. Really needed that. They've got a variety of vibrant new colors as well to complement any and all skin tones with my favorite new color probably simply being the carbon black. I love the new quick charging function as well. Not that it's needed all that often considering the battery life lasts up to 32 hours. And this allows me to use them on my walks, chatting with editor Troy about the next video or listening to the New Heights podcast when they drop new news. And I also use them while listening to Lo-Fi while I script and 
and edit videos with the family upstairs. Helps block out the noise. And no joke, these are probably the most comfortable earbuds I've ever worn, which makes them pretty easy to wear for hours on end. I forget that I'm wearing them. And when you consider the fact that you are getting the same audio quality expected from the big guys at half the price, these Raycon Everyday Earbuds are a no-brainer of a purchase. So what are you waiting for? To support the channel and upgrade your audio quality at an affordable price, make sure to click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash chiefs to get 20% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. All right, look, Tom Brady stands are nervous. They see the greatness of Patrick Mahomes proving true year after year and can't bear the thought of somebody being greater than their false idol, Tom Shady, the man whose name will forever be tied to Deflategate and Spygate, but also the man who managed to win seven Super Bowl rings, even beating Mahomes twice in the playoffs when their careers overlapped. But this is also the man who is in real danger of losing the throne of the greatest quarterback of all time to a man who lives on Coors Light and Whataburger. Now, I bring up Mahomes' playoff losses to Brady early on in this segment because that's what people are gonna be quick to use to discredit Mahomes' unparalleled seven-year trajectory thus far, which I'll get to here in a moment. But yes, Mahomes has lost to Brady twice in the playoffs. That first loss in the 2018 AFC Championship still has me pissed off at D Ford for being off sides, by the way. Then of course, in overtime, Mahomes never got to see the field, but too bad, so sad for you, Patrick. Overtime rules are honestly just fine until you happen to benefit from those rules a few years later and poor, poor Josh Allen doesn't get to see the field. Then of course, the rules are changed. Anyway, then of course, there is Super Bowl 55. The game in which the Chiefs' makeshift O-line featured only center Austin Ryder in his usual spot after right tackle Mitchell Schwartz hurt his back earlier in the season, never to return. Then, left tackle Eric Fisher tore his Achilles in KC's AFC Championship win over the Buffalo Bills, and the O-line then proceeded to get dominated, decimated. Uh, insert word here, etc. by the Bucks D-line, with Mahomes scrambling nearly 500 yards horizontally before his throws or sacks in that game. Not to mention, he had multiple throws bounce off his receivers' faces. But hey, an L is an L, and what an ugly loss that was. With that out of the way, here's why Brady stands are nervous. If you compare the first seven seasons of Patrick Mahomes' career to the first seven of Tom Brady, Mahomes has by far had the greatest seven-year start in NFL history. While both quarterbacks each won three Super Bowls through their first seven seasons in the league, the comparison stops there because Mahomes dominates Brady in literally every statistical category while playing the same exact amount of regular season games. Mahomes has 6,860 more passing yards, 72 more passing touchdowns, 15 less interceptions, 1,500 more rushing yards. Yes, he's far from a statue in the pocket and nine more rushing touchdowns. He's even made it to three more Pro Bowls, been selected to two more All-Pro teams, won two more MVPs, and one more Super Bowl MVP award in this span. And if that wasn't enough, Mahomes also has a better overall record and a better completion percentage without having to consistently throw five yard checkdowns to get the job done. And with the accolades continuing to pile up for Mahomes, look at the difference in ages these two QBs were when certain milestones were reached. Thank you, Barry McCockiner, for the research on this one. Mahomes got his 15th playoff win roughly six years earlier than Brady got his 16th. Mahomes then got his third ring at 28. Brady didn't get his fourth until 37. Mahomes then got his third Super Bowl MVP at 28. Meanwhile, Brady was 39 when he got his fourth Super Bowl MVP. What that means is Mahomes is on track to keep pace statistically with Brady depending on how long he plays and has plenty of time to do so. Six seasons worth of time for Mahomes to keep pace in wins, nine seasons worth to keep pace in rings, and 11 seasons worth to keep pace in Super Bowl MVP. So yeah, he's got... T-I-M-E, but at least as of right now, doesn't even need all that time to reach these milestones. And even if he does not reach them all, Super Bowl rings aren't everything. While most regard Brady as the greatest QB to ever play, some actually view Joe Montana as the greatest QB in history due to him winning all four of his Super Bowl appearances. Four of four, 100% win rate. Some argue that's more impressive than seven of 10. I mean, Bill Russell has more rings than Michael Jordan, but cool, nobody freaking cares. Mahomes right now is three for four in seven years. Nobody has won more games during this time. In fact, nobody is even close. Something else that is interesting to note is Mahomes is five and one when trailing by 10 or more in the playoffs over the last five years. And then all time in Super Bowl history, when trailing by 10 or more, Mahomes is three and one, 
Brady is two and one, and all others are two and 47. Basically, Mahomes is him, more athletic, more clutch when it matters, has been carried by his defense way less, doesn't cheat to get an advantage over his opponents, and Brady stands cannot stand that, being completely stuck in the past forevermore. Again, the only thing Mahomes needs right now is time, something that Brady, to his credit, was able to do by using satanic rituals to extend his longevity in the league at the cost of his entire family. And with all that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you believe Mahomes is a better quarterback than Brady, at least from the comparison of the first seven years of their careers, given what I've shared in this video, or does that not yet matter? Matter, and we still need to see more from him first. Either way, it's a very divisive yet fun off-season topic that definitely baited a bunch of brain cell-less Patriots fans. Suckers, let me know either way in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.